All right, good evening, everybody. Um, we will call to order this school committee meeting, Milton School Committee for June 14th, 2023. Um, the first order of business is to approve our agenda for this evening. Um, Member Loring, I believe the school building committee did, and and Dr. Miranda, did they meet? No, we're meeting next no. week. Okay. So that's one thing we can remove from the agenda. Are there any other changes? Okay. Great. Well, in that case, we can um, move into citizen speak. Um, we have up to 15 minutes set aside. And um, there are no attendees. Looks like there's nobody. Uh, yeah, OK. So we will not have anyone speaking for citizen speak tonight. Um, and that means we can move right to you, Dr. McKinney, for the superintendent's report. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, I certainly want to thank everyone across the district from our, our faculty and staff for a successful school year. Our teachers and students have worked uh, so hard this year and are so deserving of an enjoyable and relaxing summer. I also want to take the opportunity to thank the school committee for your help through the budget in town meeting and for the opportunity to fill in for uh, as interim superintendent after uh, Superintendent Sheehan uh, departed in January. And with that, we're looking forward to Dr. Burroughs beginning his position as superintendent July 1st. He'll again be visiting uh, the Milton Public Schools uh, tomorrow on Friday. And two reminders, a uh, reminder that school will be closed on Monday for June 19th, for Juneteenth. And the last day of school will be a half day on June 21st. And that's our updates for tonight. Thank you, Dr. McKinney. Um, we can open up to any questions or comments people have. I guess I would just like to say thank you to you <laughs> um, for having served as our interim superintendent for these past several months. Um, thank you for stepping up to fill that important role for Milton um, and for helping us make it through this transition time um, and all that you've done to keep us on track. So um, really appreciate that. And um, of course, also echo your thanks to uh, everyone on Milton Public School staff for everything that you've done all year. Um, anyone have any questions or comments for Dr. McKinney? Dr. Miranda? Yeah, no, I just uh, would like to um, echo what you just said, uh, Dr. Carroll, um, that really, um, you know, thank you for all the work that you've done um, and also to the team overall. I think I, you know, this is my, after serving, right, my first full year, I realize how, you know, the team does keep stepping up over and over again, and we've had an amazing year. I can I only see more good things coming our way. Um, I think there continues to be a lot of work ahead, but I'm excited, um, you know, to have a full team um, this coming year, right? Um, we know that everyone's been doing more, more than they uh, can do, right? Um, in any given day. And so I, I thank everybody for that. And uh, thank you to my fellow school committee members. And I just think we were in for something today. I was actually fortunate enough to be at the Cunningham School um, during awards uh, ceremony. And it was just beautiful again to see the, the kids be celebrated and to uh, for them to be ready for their next step. So again, a testament to that. We were at the Glover earlier this week as well. And that was fantastic. So just thank you. I think very good things are happening and excited to, for the year ahead. Thanks, Dr. Miranda. Member Loring? Just want to echo the thanks uh, to Dr. McKinney for 
stepping up again, superintendent job, a very hard job, uh, much less doing that in addition to your other job. Um, and, you know, I know that effect also trickles down to Dr. Pavlicek, right, and the, the team all kind of taking on additional work uh, when, again, as uh, Dr. Miranda said, we're, we're short staffed. So that, that's a lot. You're already a, a fairly lean, um, it's a nice way of saying it, uh, team. And so to be down at a member like that is enormous. And also Dr. You know, McKinney, given how short your tenure in Milton has already been, it you know feels like you've been here for five years. I was honestly, I, I forget at times how shortened your tenure is given uh, how much you've stepped up and taken stuff on. So I just wanna similarly uh, thank you for that and for all that means for, for the kids of Milton. Thanks, Member Loring. Member Argis. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to take a moment to say, um, since this is our last meeting before summer recess, I'd like to thank Dr. McKinney and Dr. Pavlicek for this year. Um, thank you as, as my first year. I really appreciate um, your guidance and support and, and you really stepping up um, for us. And I would also like to thank my um, fellow school committee members uh, for your dedication to our schools, um, for the kindness you've shown and for being such great role models to our community. I'm honored to serve alongside you and I look forward to working with all of you this upcoming year. Thank you. Thanks, Member Vargas. Um, Member Rostin. And I want to just to share the same level of appreciation, um, echoing what actually what Dr. McKinney said it was an entire school community of administrators, faculty, staff. This felt like our first year where we had a sense of normalcy and it was hard for people and they stuck it out day after day and put their best foot forward to ensure that we provided our students with a learning environment where they could be successful and we all recognize that there's more work to be done, but the fact that we are all moving in the right direction and we will have a new leader to guide us in this, I just want to express my appreciation to the entire Milton Public Schools community. Each one of us, whether you're on school committee, a principal, administrator, a teacher, an aide, um, it, took a, it took more than a village, it took a town. <laughs> and it's very much appreciated and I can't wait to begin our summer planning because we have a lot of really good work ahead of us. And I think that we're, we're moving in the right direction. So thank you all. Go ahead, member Chu. <laughs> I just want to also echo the thanks um, to both superintendents, um, especially on any questions that we have raised during our meeting we always immediately get um, solutions or suggestion to how to solve those questions. And we really appreciate all the efforts that you both put in. And, um, and also very happy to work with this great team. This is just the beginning of all the good things that we can do to the, our community. Thank you all. Thank you all um, for those really nice comments. And we're you know lucky that we get to keep working with both of you. Um, Dr. Pavlicek and Dr. McKinney in your roles going forward and uh, yeah, really excited to welcome uh, to welcome Dr. Burroughs officially, you know, in July 1st, but he'll be spending additional time here in the next couple of weeks as I know he sees through his entry plan, which has been so thoughtfully put together and allowed for that time for him to kind of keep preparing to hit the ground running. So um, a lot to look forward to and um, thanks again. Um, in terms of um, moving forward, uh, let's see, with the chair's report, uh, that's next on our agenda. Um, I do not have um, any particular topics to discuss under that item. The main thing I was planning to do was what we just did, <laughs> which was offer some acknowledgement and um, sort of recognition of the milestone of this meeting as we close out the year. Um, and 
you all have really eloquently stated, um, I think how much has been accomplished and also how much there is to look forward to, which is really exciting, um, including I was reading about the baseball team. Um, once again, going to the state championships. Um, so good luck to them. Um, and uh, to all of our students making their way through the final days of school and of course all of our educators as well. Um, hoping everyone will have a really safe and fun relaxing summer. Um, before we coast off into a few weeks of a break, uh, we do have several um, subcommittee reports and advisory committee reports. That's the bulk of this meeting. Um, the first one we have is finance. Member Ross Denny. Oh, hi, good evening, everyone. This morning we held our first finance committee since the election and we spent time on two agenda items. We reviewed the, we discussed the financial reports that Dr. Pavlicek has the capacity to generate in the, in the office. Many of those reports, or I should say the bulk of that information comes from the accounting software we have with some supplemental resources that um, basically Dr. Pavlicek is manually entering additional information to give us a full view of what's going on financially. And we discussed having quarterly soft close reports as well as the end of year report, which we anticipate um, shortly for the for basically school year 23. We also had a discussion about the FY24 budget planning process where Dr. Pavlicek uh, gave the committee an overview of the process as he's conducted it and explained that because Dr. Burroughs has spent a significant amount of time helping to create the budgets in his, in his current role, in, in Vermont, he plans to be an integral part of the process next school year. We talked about um, the process by which we're going to incorporate both the warrant and the warrant committee in the select board, as well as the strong town administrator. And last, but really importantly, um, how to increase the integration of the strategic plan into our budget planning process. And Dr. Pavlicek shared that this was something that Dr. Burroughs also has an interest in. So I feel as though we are going to have a step function increase in terms of the level of information that we are able to review and the way that we are able to plan for fiscal year 24. And then we adjourned. And I also have two warrants for us to approve. So I will make a motion to approve warrant number 46 dated June 1st, 2023 in the amount of $414,200.85. So I'm making a motion to approve that. Second. Have... Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Need to do a roll call vote. Oh, okay. Roll call vote. All in favor. Oh, I'm sorry, all in favor is not relevant here. Let's go around my screen. Um, Member Varhees? Yes. Dr. Miranda? Yes. Uh, Dr. Carroll? Yes. Member Loring? Yes. And myself? Yes. So it's unanimous. Member, oh, Chu. Oh, Member Chu. Sorry, I didn't see you there. <laughs> yes. Now I see the palm trees blowing past you. <laughs> How did I miss that? <laughs> it was too much like vacation now. It was, uh, I wish I was there. <laughs> okay, thank you. So that's unanimously approved. And then the second warrant is warrant number 47, dated June 8th, 2023, in the amount of $237,898.59. So I make a motion to approve that. Do I have a second? Second. Just, just to be clear, you mean 537? I think you said 200. Oh, did I get the wrong amount? I have 237. The, oh, the motion okay. document has 537. Okay. That was shared by Charlene. So, Dr. Pavlicek, do you know? I pulled it from the file I got from Gail, but let me let me double check. Yeah. 
Yeah, the one I have says 237. So maybe we should postpone approving that until we have the correct number, because apparently there are two. So we'll save that for the fall. And that's the end of the finance committee. Member Rossini. On the on the motions, there's a mem vendor warrant 48. Too. I didn't sign not, that yet. Okay. All right. I've not been in. Okay. So we'll do those two next time. Yeah. 47 and 48. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, does anyone have any questions for member of study or anything else about the finance report? It sounds like some great updates. So great. Okay, so um, uh, next. Actually, I, I just pulled the the warrant. It is two thirty seven. I pulled the original of the warrant. Thank you. Okay, so let's we can go. So ahead. should we go ahead and vote on that then? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So so can you just re start it over and make a new motion then? Yes. Please. Thank you. So I am making a motion to approve warrant, warrant number 47 dated June 8th, 2023 in the amount of $237,898.59. Is there a second? Second. Second. All right. And for a roll call vote, Dr. Carroll? Yes. Member Chu? Yes. Member Loring? Yes. Dr. Miranda? Yes. Member Varhees, yes, and myself, yes. Okay, thank you all, and that's it for finance. Thank you, uh, Member Loring, facilities. Is uh, policy not next? I'm happy to go. I just didn't want to. No, sorry, you're right. Sorry about that. Member Varghese, policy. Okay. Um, so we had our first policy meeting since the election yesterday. Um, Dr. Carroll, Member Chu, Dr. McKinney, Dr. Pavlicek, and I were all present. Um, we discussed policy KBD, which is our parent communication policy. We made some final edits and approved those updates yesterday, and we will have our first reading of this policy at our next school committee meeting in August. Um, we then had a very meaningful conversation about our 2023-2024 calendar, which was initiated by a request from a community member who asked for us to consider recognizing Ramadan and Eid on our school calendar. So um, uh, we had it was. I, I thought it was a very interesting discussion just to hear all the different viewpoints. Um, and so it was, you know, and I'm looking forward to sharing this with you um, in the fall in more detail. Um, and in addition to that, we also um, talked about exploring the, pos in addition to exploring the possibility of designating a day as a holiday, we also talked about taking this request a step further and creating opportunities for our students to learn more about the different cultures represented in Milton, along with how we can make this learning consistent according, across all four of our elementary schools and what we can do at the middle and high schools as well. Um, we also discussed turning this into a larger townwide initiative to create events throughout the year for our community to celebrate and learn about other cultures. Um, you know, we talked about how we have such a diverse community in Milton, and that is what makes us so special. So as always, as I mentioned, it was great to hear the different perspectives from our subcommittee, and I look forward to continuing this conversation with the rest of you. Um, we then went into a list of all the policies that were including and in, included in the latest MASD newsletter, which Dr. Pavlicek has kindly volunteered to help us get through. There's a lot of them. But um, I know he's he's been so great. Um, actually, him and Dr. McKinney have been so great to kind of really help us get through some of those ones. Um, so we were able to cover a lot in policy this past year um, under um, Dr. Carroll as chair. So I hope I can kind of 
you know, try to try to step into those shoes. So we'll see what happens. But um, anyway, it was great. Um, and then we also approved our meet, uh, meeting minutes from April 11th. So that was it. Thanks, Member Varghese. Yes, Member Loring. Yeah, I just had a question on the, um, I had a outreach, I think, before I became elected uh, for that same community member about having the those holidays be recognized on the calendar. Is the request um, that they are like recognized on the calendar or that there is a holiday from school uh, for those, um, to acknowledge those holidays? I think it's both to, you know, get a, you know, have us um, designated day off. Um, and I know it depends on the calendar each year. So the day could change, um, fall sometime in April. Um, but, um, I, and I, and I, as I mentioned to this community member, that would be a larger discussion that we would bring it up in policy and talk about it uh, further and kind of get everybody's feedback in terms of what works and what doesn't, you know, there are a um, lot of other um, things that go into play. So, um, and it was nice to have that initial conversation yesterday. And um, we did also talk, um, discuss um, bringing this member to come and speak to our committee in the fall um, so that you all can hear um, directly from, from her and um, see, you know, so. Um, but, and she was also um, would, learned, you know, express that it would be great for all of us, to, you know, as a community and as a district to learn more about all the different holidays and cultures. Um, and, you know, versus just, you know, a day off that it's just another day off, you know, so it's like, what, what are we doing, you know, so, and I think um, part of creating a very inclusive culture, I think, uh, as a, you know, community, I think it, it's a good step uh, to start having those conversations. Okay, well, um, thanks again, Member Varghese, for your leadership on that. Um, and yeah, looking forward to continuing the discussions. Um, and if there's no more questions or comments around the policy updates, then we can move to facilities with Member Loring. Thank you very much. Um, so we, uh, just to wrap the uh, facility advisory committee um, just about an hour ago, around 6.30. Uh, we opened the meeting by voting on the prior meeting minutes uh, from the 31st, I believe. Um, and then we uh, had a very brief update from the consolidated facilities director, given we were only two weeks apart. Um, so there wasn't a whole lot new that uh, Christopher Hayden had to share. Um, we discussed as a group, just kind of, again, clarifying the focus of the committee, right? How we can be most helpful uh, to the district and uh, leveraging all the talents within the committee. And, um, you know, we came to a general agreement that uh, we were gonna go and make sure we're addressing the space needs of the, the district um, and creating kind of a new five-year space plan to um, create capacity for, um, resiliency within the school spaces uh, to address kind of the overcrowding as we await the building of a new school. Um, and so we talked about that in kind of great depth. And some of our next steps are we're, we're going to schedule a full day um, site visit for all members of the facility advisory uh, committee to do walkthroughs of all the buildings, uh, as well as uh, hopefully meet with uh, principals or school administrators to talk with them about their experiences. Um, and then from there, uh, be able to kind of create a list of space uh, priorities and, and maybe break up the work across some, some smaller subcommittees uh, within the subcommittee. Um, so that is our, our plan of action. Uh, that's not going to happen until uh, school resumes in September, but um, that's kind of how we're, we're thinking about the work and, and trying to move that forward. Uh, we had a brief conversation about any potential projects for the summer. There's still none that are, are currently online, um, but there, um, Dr. Pavlicek uh, mentioned that uh, he, Dr. McKinney, and um, 
Dr. Burroughs are all going to be meeting uh, about some potential plans, uh, I believe next week. Uh, we also talked about some, you know, medium term things of um, the, the director, Chris Hayden, was potentially going to see if we could use the architecture firm that we uh, have a relationship with to get some initial designs and uh, pricing ideas for the fourth floor of Cunningham uh, to see if that, again, might be cost effective and um, just that's one area that we feel like we can go ahead and uh, start to get some information on as we're, we're trying to collect this holistically across the district. Uh, and then from there, we just had some housekeeping as it relates to kind of meeting schedules, um, you know, membership for next year and, uh, you know, meeting styles. So uh, that was what we discussed earlier today. Thank you, Member Loring. Uh, Member Rastani. So this question is for both um, Dr. Pavlicek and Member Loring. A parent raised a concern with, to me about the Wi-Fi in the high school auditorium, and I know there was a concerted effort this school year to attempt to amplify whatever signal is in there because there's so many study halls. Is that something that falls under facilities or is that IT? That one's IT. Um, we had some more access points actually put in this spring. Um, and uh, Bob Hattison, the director of IT, is looking at the issues there. There were issues there and in the cafeteria. But what, we're in the process of adding more access points. Part of the problem is in the auditorium, they were on the side walls, which if you're in the middle of it is not uh, excellent. So we'll, uh, we're looking at best how to best to, uh, address that. Thank you. I know the technology has changed um, and it, it takes, there's hopefully an easier solution. Thanks. Member Chu. Um, my question is also typed in the chat box. Um, I'm not in the facility subcommittee, but can I join in with the facility site walk or meeting with the principals and teachers when we have that schedule next year? I think this question is for Dr. Uh, for Member Loring. Yeah, my uh, well, it would be myself and Member Varghese. So I believe if one other school committee member wanted to attend, that would be allowable because we wouldn't have quorum. Um, so I certainly have no no problem, Member Chu, if you you want to take that spot uh, and and join us. Uh, we still haven't fully scheduled the date yet, but I will definitely loop you in. Um, Sounds good. Thank you. Um, go ahead, Member Rastani. Given that it's it's not a meeting, it's a walkthrough, no decisions are being made, I would think that any of us could attend. It's similar to when we have a guest visit. I might visit for a couple of them, but I, the whole day probably would be much. But thank you for arranging that. I really appreciate the fact that your committee has looked into what can we do in five years for, for those students and teachers that are in those non-traditional settings. I think it'll give them um, it will give them a sense of relief to know that there'll be some more permanent solutions for them to give them a sense of normalcy as they continue to work in these crowded environments. So thank you. Thanks, Dr. Pavlicek. If um, a quorum of the school committee is present, you would still need to post it. The site walks that are exempt under the open meeting law are site walks of construction sites. Um, and where this is a school, uh, if there's a quorum of the uh, facility subcommittee, it would have to be posted as an open meeting as well. So there are uh, some logistical issues in terms of how many people should go at once. And it, it might turn out that we need to do two walks or something like that in order to avoid open meeting law issues. Thanks. So, yeah, I mean, clearly there's time, plenty of time to kind of work that out and make sure the planning can accommodate um, following the law, obviously, but also uh, making sure that any school committee members that are interested in having that um, information are able to, to do that somehow. So I th that's something that I think you know, we can stay in contact over the next few months as the as you move closer to planning that. Um, 
but it sounds, I, I agree with member Ross Denny. It sounds like a really good approach and, you know, definitely appreciate your, um, the, having taken the additional time over the past couple of weeks to hit the ground running with this work. So thanks. Any other questions or comments around facilities? If not, um, then we can move on to approve our minutes uh, from September, September, oh my gosh, sorry, June 7th, last week's meeting. Did anybody have any um, edits to the minutes? Seems like member Loring may be having some um, issue with connectivity. Um, we can, oh, there he is. Yeah, there he is. Okay. Um, are we ready to vote on these? Sorry about that. No problem. Okay. So I will make a motion to approve the minutes of June 7th, 2023 Milton School Committee meeting. Is there a second? Second. Okay, uh, roll call vote. Um, Dr. Miranda? Yes. Member Loring? Yes. Member Varghese? Yes. Member Chu? Yes. Member Ross Denny? Yes. And I vote yes as well. So those minutes are approved. And that brings us to our next meeting agenda items. Um, so uh, we will we will make sure this is on our agenda for our, our um, meetings in late July, early August, our retreats, just so that we kind of prepare for that um, first full school committee meeting of the new school year. Um, in the meantime, I know we've identified that we will have a first reading of policy KBD that will be ready for that meeting agenda. Does anyone have any burning items that you would like to name at this time that you look forward to including on that agenda? Yes. Go ahead, member two. Um, could we talk about um, up, up to school registrations and how how crazy it is within 15 minutes of the registration open time, all the spots are gone. Um, and even with the effort of not having the four elementary school register on the same day. So this year we have it on different day, but the, the frustration of having your computer ready like 10 minutes before 12 o'clock on, on the assigned day and keep refreshing until you get the spot and within 15 minutes you might be get waitlisted or there's a whole system might crash this kind of things i hope i don't think it have happened like this or this kind of frustration have not been escalated like this before the pandemic so i understand about how the the after school have changed the flexible um, program into the required four, uh, five day enrollment, but could we possibly have we think about a better system to help solve the issue that the parents have brought up? Um, I have heard from at least five family right now about this issue, <laughs> just from Cunningham. So um, that is the piece that I would love to. Um, here in talk about or discuss about in our next meeting. Uh, I also have another question is about um, conference attending. Like if we attend any conference, like we receive the email from Shireen 
about summer conferences for school committee members, possibly conferences. Um, what are the policies for us enrolling in these conferences? Does the school system reimburse the registration fees for those conferences? Um, is it normal for school committee members to attend outside conferences that is not required by the district? Um, those are just some of the things that I'm wondering about. Thanks. Um, yep. So if we, um, setting aside your first point for just a moment, and I'm not sure if um, member Rostani or member Lauren, you were going to add to that piece, but just the question you were just asking about conferences, Dr. Pavlicek, do you know about that? Um, as I think you're referring to the MASC joint conference that we received information about attending. Yes. Do you know the answer to that, Dr. Pavlicek, as far as past practice or how, how that has worked before for school community members attending that particular conference as a member district of MASC? The, the school, the, um, the district does pick up the cost of uh, registration for those conferences. Um, the MASC ones in particular. If you're looking at different conferences, maybe put on by a private entity or something like that, I think that's a question for the school committee to decide whether they, you know, to what extent they want to support outside conferences. But generally, the conferences by MASC, for instance, are are covered uh, by the by the district as you know, since we are member districts. So, if, or if it was an MASS one for administrators, similarly. Um, generally, we like to know in advance so we can budget for it, but it, uh, you know, those costs are tend to be covered. Thank if there's you. one, if, if there's one in Seattle, however, and you want plane fare and, and a hotel room, um, we'll talk. Okay. Number two, does that answer that question for you? Are you yes. thinking about the MASC one or oh, something I, beyond that? No, it's just because of we receiving the MASC conference yeah. information. So I just curious about how what's the protocol for that. Thank you very much for the answer, Dr. Pavlicek. Okay, great. So um, back to your topic around Milton Community Schools and after school enrichment and registration. Uh, Member Ross Denny, were you going to speak to that same issue? Yes, I think that one of the things I would add to that list is would we should ask um, what Director Sandoval, under what circumstances could we increase the capacity of the program to reflect the demand? And I think the only proxy we have for demand is who's currently enrolled and who's been waitlisted. But if if the issue is space or staff or, you know, whatever it is, if she could articulate how it could be expanded, it could be something that the school committee could actively address in partnership with the Milton Community Schools, because this is the second year since, um, I think once we came back from pandemic, the reality was she explained there's not enough staff and they were overcrowded in pre-pandemic situations. But the reality is there's not an, this isn't a, an urban area where there's a lot of after school providers for kids to walk to or take a bus to. And it leaves parents of elementary age students scrambling for cover. Um, a colleague who will go unnamed contacted me today and basically said, it'll be really hard to continue my work under these circumstances. And that's actually concerning because I think that this person isn't the only one in our community that will, um, have challenges because of our, our capacity in the Milton Community Schools. So if we can add that to the list of requests, and if there's a couple people around the district that are really good with this to work around her to come up with something, I think it's well worth the brain power. Thank you, Member Ross Denny. Uh, Member Loring, are you on the same topic or a different topic? Same topic, uh, but Member Ross Denny uh, said it very well. So uh, I, I just wholeheartedly agree with that statement of any information on how we potentially could, what would be the circumstance in which we could expand access um, to families given how impactful uh, the ability to have access to 
quality after school program where their kids are safe and cared for and you know engaged uh, I think is important especially in the light of the fact that so many families are have two working parents uh, so the, the ability of one to stay home or pick up or sacrifice their career is just not there financially uh, given we know what how, how challenging times can be so um, that, would, that would be great and I appreciate member Q, uh, Chu for bringing that up thanks uh, Dr. Miranda Yes, the, the only other thing I would add, well, I would also echo what's been said. And I've also been contact, contacted by several, several people who wanted to understand sort of the slots, the number of slots, how would, were those determined and how does it compare to uh, the number of students that are um, not just the demand, but the number of students at each of the schools and you know, where, who gets prioritized and who doesn't, like it just seems like sort of like an open it up to everyone right, regardless of whether you have sort of parents who work <laughs> um, and um, that that seemed to be a concern for some folks. Um, but I think also I wondered if given uh, sort of what we saw in terms of the plan earlier this year around staffing the after school with by contracting with outside with external parties, right, third parties contracting, uh, it was my understanding that by contracting with third parties, we were going to be increasing capacity within the program. And uh, that also there had been measures that were taken to increase uh, wages so that we would be more competitive so we could attract more staffing. So my question to uh, the director would be, whether what assumptions were used in creating the number of slots available was the assumption that staffing was going to be the same as it was this school year or did it take into account the reorganizing um, by contracting with third parties and also um, assuming that we would be more competitive and be able to attract um, more staff for each of the sites so um, I would like to understand exactly um, how that was factored into the number of slots. And in full transparency, my family has been affected by this. So I'm feeling it personally. Thank you all um, for raising really good questions. Um, the questions you were just raising, Dr. Miranda, also make me wonder about, you know, depending on what assumptions were used in this initial um, registration phase, if those were conservative assumptions and it turns out to be possible to have additional capacity, then will we, could we hope to see greater movement off the wait list than we were able to see this past year, potentially? I mean, I'm sorry you've been impacted by it. That's really tough. And um, clearly this is something that we need to investigate and understand. So um, let's just say Dr. McKinney, you know, Dr. Pavlicek, we can um, loop in Dr. Burroughs, but we can request in August um, perhaps a report from Director Sandoval that can provide some updates, perhaps a debrief on how this registration process will have gone. I know it's ongoing and um, I believe Tucker is probably the last school, which is tomorrow, um, to do the registration. So um, is that is that okay um, that we can request that and <laughs> maybe provide these questions ahead so that she could uh, uh, respond and with some of this information. We can follow up on that. Yes, and if you can send along the questions, we'll start preparations, yep. Thank you. Um, okay, were there any other uh, agenda items that people wanted to raise. So thank you, Member Chu, for having opened up that discussion. 
Uh, we're still in the space of next meeting agenda items. Are, is there anything else that um, anyone wants to add? Member Raggis, go ahead. Um, one of the things I wanted to add, this just came up like in the last couple of weeks, I know, um, you know, in terms of for our town's um, sports programs, I know we don't have um, a lot of facilities for our students, um, especially at the middle school and elementary school, like middle school programs that feed into the high school programs to um, practice, um, you know, um, during like inclement weather or anything like that, or just have dedicated time, even if, um, and I know it's been difficult to schedule, and I know it's hard because we really only have the field house for a lot of the practices. So that's something I think we should start thinking about just as, you know, as we try to expand programs and as, you know, as we get more, encourage more kids to try different sports and, you know, all of those things like, you know, getting more, um, uh, you know, like increasing diversity in sports, all of those things that we want to do, I think, you know, part of the problem is we don't have a space for them. So it's like, how do we, you know, kind of start thinking about that? Like, how do we provide space for our students to make it cost effective for them to sign up for things that so they're not paying um, really expensive, like rental fees. So because the cost of families are really, really high. So you know, similar to our after school programs, you know, like what do we, what do we do? What can we do, you know, looking into space um, for our, our students to participate in sports and uh, be part of the community, but at the same time, like, you know, how do we make it more cost efficient for their families? Thank you. Sure, thanks for raising that. Um, Member Ross, Denny, are you gonna add to that or? No, it's a new topic. It's okay. so funny. The more people talk, I'm like, you know, this is another issue. Um, so when we were talking about the internet access in the high school auditorium, the reason why this is an issue is because, um, number one, we have more teachers out than we normally have had historically. It's not unique to Milton, wrong for, I'm just being honest about that. But it's how do we pay for substitute teachers? I, I met someone recently that indicated that they had, they traditionally would have been interested in, volu in volunteering, working as a substitute, but our rates are so low. And I, I remember us having a finance meeting where we reviewed competitive rates for our substitute teachers relative to what was going on um, in towns that would normally be competitors of ours. And I don't know if this is 100% accurate, but they said that our substitute rate is $110 a day. And the person indicated that that's very difficult, um, like works out to maybe $18, $20 an hour. And whether or not it's worthwhile, A, revisiting the issue of how much we pay substitutes, but then if there's if it makes sense thinking about how do we reduce the number of days our teachers are out, um, I know in the, in the private sector, we might have done a study like, what are people out for? And can we somehow um, make accommodations to reduce the likelihood that someone is going to need to be out of school during the school year? But it's it's got, it's become very acute at the high school because the solution is Google Classroom assignments and using the auditorium, for which this past year, internet access was was difficult. So kids are just hanging out. Thank you for raising that. Um, I mean, certainly you probably on finance, would, would that be the first place that you would if, look into that question of the substitute rates? And, and then the issue, that's right. And, but then the issue of substitutes in general, like the, the need for this, the, the number of days that people are out having some sort of, um, is it worthwhile doing some research if the rates are as high as, as I think they might be? So it's two sides to this. Okay, so um, that might be something that we can, uh, you know, get some information, some data on next year as far as um, the numbers of days missed and so on. I mean, it seems probably a little because our 
teachers and staff are entitled to a certain number of days per their contracts, it, the question would be, are people taking a days beyond the one, what is, a um, you know, allotted in the contract? I guess that, that is a question. Um, but I'm uh, sure that's, that's something that we can kind of have on a list of um, that, of, I'm not sure exactly where that would sort of fit best if it's at a, an advisory committee subcommittee or just something we would look at perhaps we can ask for that to be incorporated into a into a report that we receive so we can follow up with Dr. Burroughs once he's here around that um member Chu um I I have some thoughts about the substitute teacher please um so we can't deliberate the topic oh. of of the substitute teacher issue right now we're if, if you want to add to like the request for the agenda item you can we can do that oh can can we add okay. to the request item about what is the high school uh, um and middle school schedule looks like uh, if i remember it right it should be like rotating schedule of six days or seven days and in blocks so perhaps we can see look at the the different teachers teaching different blocks and maybe we can find in-house substitute teachers instead of from outside just for the, the certain blocks that the teachers are going to be out on that day. Sure, I'll add that to the notes and I know that is something that's done um, already, right? But okay. we can we can follow up on this. We, um, you know, we can look back at this conversation as far as like the questions that have been raised and just see what might be a way that we could provide information to help the school committee like better understand this issue. Um, Dr. Pavlicek or Dr. McKinney, does that seem fair? We can follow up. It, it is a, a, an ongoing problem. We talk, talk about it every few years. Um, we do have substitute coverage by teachers who don't in the middle and high school who are not teaching that period. But getting substitutes, not only here, but in most districts is very difficult. Um, so, but we can, we can give you a report. I mean, we have different levels of substitutes, long-term substitutes, full year substitutes, different things like that, but we can give you a report on how it works. Thank you. Okay, any other topics or things that we just want to raise here? Got a few things to that we'll be returning to. Member Argis, go ahead. Um, I wanted to, I know this year we, um, at Pierce Middle School for sixth grade, we piloted that um, seminar class. I would love kind of like a, what the feedback has been on that just a year into it, just to kind of assess the program, like how that went what the feedback was, uh, how it helped students, like so on and so forth. I think that'd be great to have. That's a great question. I wonder if that's something we could ask for their site council when they present to us. Um, I'm not sure if it's like common practice that we request certain items from those presentations, but that does, because it was a pilot program, that seems like a good thing to ask for an update on in the context of that. I don't, I don't know, I don't remember off the top of my head when Pierce is scheduled to present to us, um, but if it's like later in the year, perhaps we can, we can yeah, work out. Yeah, later because I think they went first last year. Okay, okay. All right, so um, we can, we can look into that and maybe curriculum and instruction advisory committee can also um, follow up with that as well. Um, so thank you for raising that. All right. Oops. Great. So, um, as mentioned at the, earlier, um, this is our last official school committee meeting for this school year. Um, and we will be convening once again, July 26th, um, if nothing comes up in the meantime. So 
Um, hopefully we will have a, an uneventful few weeks and everyone can close out the school year and um, enjoy the start to summer vacation. Um, thanks again, Dr. McKinney, Dr. Pavlicek, and all of you school committee colleagues for a great year. Um, any final words from anybody? Terrific. Okay, well, in that case, I will make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, Member Varghese? Yes. Member Rostenny? Yes. Member Chu? Yes. Member Loring? Yes. Dr. Miranda? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Um, thank you so much. That's that's a wrap on 2022-2023. Yep. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Have